Welcome back to Trail Trash ADV Garage with Jeff. Again, I don't know if you guys are going to be interested in this project, but uh, I was just doing some filming the day when we got the goal wing. I did get a test ride on it, but uh, I was able to bleed the front brakes and get them working. Basically, the nipples, the bleeder uh, nipples were corroded, so I used penetrating fluid and some propane heat to loosen them up and get them off, then get them uh, cleaned up, and then... Uh, back in and then I had some uh, some air trapped in here so uh, that often happens with these things is where this is at an angle you get the air bubbles in here now the master cylinder was uh, corroded um, I had to rebuild it uh, but I, it basically just a clean job anyway I'll get to that in a second you crack this off just slightly make sure you got a rag here so you don't get that mess you just crack it till you see fluid like keep that compressed, crack it so you get a little fluid, and then tighten it right back up immediately before you let go, and it won't suck it in any, back in any air. But I may not keep that master. I don't know. Like with the new build, it's really kind of a dated look. I may go with a more modern uh, setup on the front. Stay away from really cheap eBay stuff uh, or Amazon stuff because a lot of times it just doesn't work well. It'll air gets past the seals and stuff. I haven't had good luck with that stuff. Maybe some good quality stuff. Spend a little more. Um, maybe from a Z1, Z1R Enterprises or uh, Parts and More are pretty good. You can usually get some generic masters or something like that from those guys. So I may I may uh, swap out these perches at some point with the new the new handlebars. So I'm gonna wait. If I don't, if I end up using these, I will I will do a real rebuild kit because I'll get that C clip, um, which you can use any C clip as long as it you know the right diameter, like from a kit or something. But or uh, snap ring, sorry, internal snap ring. Some people call it C clips. Uh, the, pro the thing you can't get is that little rubber cover over the plunger. That's specific to the master and I, you know, you might be able to buy those separately on eBay or something like that. But uh, if you buy the rebuild kit, you'll get the rubbers. They're not terribly expensive. So anyway, that's not good. So the front brakes are working good. Now the rear brake was a problem because the bleeder snapped off in the caliper. I had to drill it out and unfortunately I buggered some of the threads doing it. It's very hard to do. I've only got certain sizes of uh, left-hand thread drill bits, and I didn't film that part. I was getting a little mad, and I was in a hurry because I wanted to get a little test ride in to see uh, if this thing would work. So the rear brake, so it's down there. I think, like there is some compliance there. Um, what I ended up doing is I had a bleeder from an old Yamaha, and I, I'm not sure what the thread is on these Hondas. Maybe an M6. The ham Yamaha bleeder was an M7 which is a very unusual uh, bolt. You can't, you know, it's, you can't walk down your hardware store usually and pick up M7s. Um, my local place that does really good with metric hardware stainless, they never stock M7s, M6s and M8s, but never M7s. But I actually had a tap for it. So I tapped it out and used the Yamaha bleeder. Now the Yamaha bleeder, the chamfer on the end of the bleeder did not match the chamfer in the bore. And I couldn't really measure the bore because I can't get down in there, right? It was bad enough just getting all the schwath out from the drilling out the old bleeder. So basically what I did was I come over to the belt sander and I just kept trying different chamfers on the bleeder and then screwing it in and, and reefing on it a little more than I want to to see if I could uh, get it to seal. And I did get it to seal, but there's obviously some air in the system or the master, the rear master is, is letting, it's, it's, it needs to be rebuilt. It needs to be cleaned up just like I did the front. So I don't know if we'll get around to that today because the main issue I wanted to get to is getting these fairings off and getting at the carbs because I've got a high idle. Um, it runs really rough until it warms up and then when it does warm up, it stays high. So it's revving around 3000 RPM. It could be because somebody monkeyed with the idle and that's the way the, the, where the idle is. But regardless of that, the carbs do need to come out for a cleaning and, and uh, inspect the... the um, o-rings around the float bowls it looks like there's some staining on the top of the engine so i'd say at some point they were leaking yeah so that the carbs do need to come out for a good cleaning anyway so i gotta get to those yeah that was uh hard i'm gonna edit that that was a long time uh i don't remember the carbs coming out that hard but i'll explain to you a little bit what happened there so the your problem are these pipes right here these coolant pipes because the car bottoms want to hit them and that finally popped out. These are sealing rings for here. Uh, and then you, your, your height, like, so you're limited here. And see this ridge right here in, in the uh, fuel tank? Or, yeah, it's probably dark. Anyway, that's why they can't come out this way. They have to go out that way. Those O-rings I just picked up usually get crushed. 
and it'll cause a vacuum leak between here and you see that surface is pretty dirty so that'll all that'll need to be cleaned up but you see these puddles yeah so that would be gas leaking out and you can see over here the same thing so i would say the float needles are um not sealing off and it's just dumping gas so um but that's hopeful that you know the bike runs fairly well like not well but it runs even with the carbs in the shape they're in there's hope that i can get these carbs back together and we'll be riding this thing fairly quickly so this is the case i need a headlight bucket but i do have a bucket and if the headlight off that is the ring and the retainer i might be able to adapt the two so we need a headlight um and then obviously we'll need signal lights in the front we're we're close to getting this thing running um it's not inspected no scotch way need inspections but yeah it just ran out in may uh we might risk it a little bit it's all legal it's insured and all that good stuff so um i don't think i'll tackle these today i think i'm actually going to get um you know i'm actually going to go for a ride on the drz and these will be for another day but i will film the breakdown on these so we'll do a little video so just a quick little update for this the drz um there's work i want to get done on that um i just keep putting it off for other projects and i shouldn't be i should be getting i want to put in a um, charging port on it we got some cheap Amazon um, uh, guards for this we had these power mats on that kind of connect here but they they don't have any backing on them so uh, we put these ones with the backing it doesn't have any reinf metal reinforcement so we put these ones on because we keep banging levers when we get down so we may end up upgrading those to some tusk ones I think Collin City is going to order some tusk but for now, these cheap Amazon ones are going to do the trick. Uh, they were on the XT before. They've, they've taken a beating here and there, so, and they still work. So, you know what? For cheap Amazon stuff, they're pretty darn good. Bit of a hard install on the KLX, so just an FYI. There's bungs in here, welded bungs, and they're not threaded. So, I had to drill them out and thread them for an M8 uh, 1.25. And then, we've got a whole video on this. Maybe you've, you've seen it by now, but these are dirt racks from dirtracks.ca. It's a Canadian company. What a good piece of kit. I mean, yes, they're they're not the cleanest bends. They do narrow. The, the pipe does narrow, so there's a, just a tight, tiny bit of kinking in that tight 90 degree. The welds, I mean, obviously they're hand welded, You could, as you can see. But the powder coat is nice on it. It's like a wrinkle finish. And uh, they're sturdy, very sturdy. They went together fairly easy. Kind of a neat design with the spacers and everything to make it work. But the best thing about it is i'll get you out of the sun here the best thing about it is they're 160 dollars canadian for all, that whole rack it's just you know it's a it's a great bargain i may wind up doing the side crash protection for the drz so that's kind of how they go they just connect to the frame here and so they provide some crash protection but they also have um you know mounting points they don't show them there but I think it shows, no, it doesn't anyway. But you could, uh, you know, you could adapt these to little saddlebags, side saddlebags that aren't too big. The the rackless ones could just attach right there. Um, I don't know. I, I might, because they're only, what, $127 Canadian? Dirtracks.ca. Uh, I can't say enough nice about them, really. Um, again, if you are got a fancy BMW and you don't like the look of the welds or whatever and you want you know your SW Motec or your Givi or whatever you want um great but if you're on a budget you can't go wrong with these dirt racks carbs next video so I'm gonna go ride now so for Jeff at Trail Trash ADV Garage I'll catch you on the next video <laughs>